Hey everybody, this is Stitch1993 here. Welcome back to another classic movies. Now, you may be wondering, why am I talking about a documentary today? Well, it's not really a documentary, even though it is... Uh, displayed as such and it was advertised as such originally when airing back in 2005 on the Discovery Channel. But in actuality, it feels more like a film with just some clips of some scientists and some not-so-scientists talking about the what-if factors of what you're seeing on screen. So let me start from the beginning. This is called Alien Planet. It's considered a docu-fiction TV special that aired 2005 on the Discovery Channel. And it kind of takes you to a whole different planet. And we see just a whole, it's just a, basically an hour and a half of creatures. And sometimes there's a scientist or George Lucas uh, talking about how these creatures may have lived and breathed air and ate and all that. It's based on the book Expedition by Wayne Barlow. And if you haven't checked out Wayne Barlow's books, I highly recommend checking this out. Uh, he's got a whole bunch of just awesome, just kind of what if and speculative art of creatures, of aliens, of fantasy life. I f believe he's influenced tons of people including George Lucas which is why George is probably on this <laughs> video so the story starts out with a spacecraft called Von Buring uh, is left Earth's orbit of course and has traveled you know light years away um, in to a new planet called Darwin 4 it sends out first one probe but the probe like malfunctions during uh, its entry into the atmosphere and it dies so we already have a death toll within like the first 10-15 minutes of this movie here and then the computer decides well you know one failed so let's send out the other two at the same time and kind of sends them a bit far apart so they don't land right next to each other. So one is called Leonardo da Vinci. They call him Leo whenever talking about him. And the other is Isaac Newton, which they call Ike. So they land on this planet and the whole time it shows that they're kind of being watched by this creature. You never see the creature except for like shadows or maybe like a, a hand or a tentacle every time they kind of show it from the, the point of view of the alien. You won't see the alien until the very end. Basically, they are trying to search for intelligent life on this planet, and the whole rest of the film is just them going from one scene to another, just exploring this world and seeing all the the fauna, the creatures, the, the water-ish, and just how it would happen how it would i guess evolve into being like that and they're uh, these really cool robots so they're these hydrogen filled balloons with little heads that pop out of them they kind of look like flying turtles in a way so they're just floating around uh they got little like jet propulsion little fans to like push them and uh every now and then you'll see like a little hand will come out or they even show that they're they're able to send out like little like uh spider kind of things if they need to get more close up and in person on these creatures and they have like kind of like artificial intelligence so that they can kind of decide of what is necessary to research and when it's being too dangerous and they should just kind of leave that area and they also are equipped with like these little videos that like if they ever come across what they think to be intelligent life forms they're supposed to like show little screens to show just a whole bunch of different types of images and words to try to uh, communicate with whatever creature they come upon first they come upon these things called arrow tongues and and they're just like the coolest things ever like these freaking things look like they came out of like i don't know it's like a uh star wars or i don't know they kind of remind me of something from like spore or no man's guy just something it's just you know but they look like real enough to like they could i guess 
essentially possibly live but there's they're just like these big herd animals and they've got a they're called spear tongues because of course the little the their head is shaped like a spear and then a little tongue sticks out so pretty pretty interesting and then we've got next creature that they come upon these trunk suckers the trunk suckers are like these little things that kind of just fly from tree to tree and just suck on the sap the the look kind of gross looking uh got a they they look like i don't know something that'd be like inside of a bigger creature like look, look like a like a a deflated lung kind of or like you know loose skin or something like that but what they got to watch out for is these things called daggerists uh now daggerists are like the trunk suckers enemy predator what have you and these things not only can kill and, and eat the trunk suckers, they also can, like, because of uh, the way that they've got these claws, they can potentially grab hold of the robots. So the robots eventually figure out, okay, maybe it's not safe to be here. So they go away. But, like, the daggerists have got such an interesting uh, look to them uh, on their face because it's like, they're they've got a mouth but it's like a totally like their lower jaw is like a totally different appendage really it almost looks like a second head but it, it's just so you know otherworldly of course and of course that's the creature that's like on the front of the the box if you get this uh, on dvd going forward they get into like a massive hurricane storm and they end up coming across these giant water creatures and the water on this ocean is not actual water it's like a living creature it's called the amoebic sea and it's like it's like this big old thing of jello that will kind of reach up and like try to grab uh little creatures and eat them and stuff uh but there's these bigger creatures um that kind of uh eat off of the ocean they walk on top of the jello the amoebic sea and the the feet have these giant holes on the bottom of them that are able to like get the nutrients of the amoebic sea and they're called sea striders and these things look freaking awesome like look at this thing it's like the it's it's told to be like the size of a building almost it's like uh i forget how tall they're supposed to be um but yeah it's like and it's got this cool like just orange eye it's got some like a little pinages for like hands but these feet like these look like platform shoes that they're walking on there and they kind of just trudge i guess back and forth throughout the sea as they're living they don't really go into a lot of detail about these creatures but Good lord, this is like something you'd see in freaking Half-Life. On the other side of the planet, the other robot, Leo, has found some bladder horns. Bladder horns are kind of cool. They kind of remind me of just like something you'd see in the background of like one of the Star Wars movies. I'm going to say that a lot. Like a lot of these creatures look like they came from Star Wars. But this one really looks like, um, he kind of looks like he wants to play a keyboard. Um, <laughs> but, uh... Uh, the, they're the, like the first creatures that like show signs of like intelligent life. So, uh, Ike tries to like talk with it by showing the screen and stuff. And, but the bladder horn is just like, well, what is this? And, and leaves, but it's, um, it's just a really cool creature. And then they come across, uh, these things called grove backs. Grove backs look like Pokemon. And they kind of remind me of like the, the giant Torteras from the Detective Pikachu movie. And they have these like, sp uh, splinters on them that can like, if something lands on it, it can eat it. And the, our used to attack these airplane-like creatures called skewers. I'm gonna admit skewers are kind of like the least interesting in my opinion design-wise because they, they're just like what if an airplane was a creature and it like looks so much like an airplane that you're just like how did an alien creature from light years away end up looking almost exactly like one of the, like Earth's airplanes? I feel like maybe they could have done a bit more, look into more maybe Harlow's other creatures designs and, and picked one of those. So I don't know if this one came from that or what, but uh, I highly doubt it. After that, 
then one of them is suddenly hit by a random sphere. And when it wakes up, he finds he is face to face with what they call an Eo Sapien. And uh, throughout this movie, they show that they send out these little discs, like, I guess, <laughs> like, this is made in, like, 2005, so I guess Wi-Fi and uh, digital signaling were still, like, in its infancy, so I guess nobody thought, well, why don't the robots just have Wi-Fi so they can talk back and forth with the uh, space shuttle and people at guess it's supposed to be still nasa every time they like come across a new creature they like send up this little disc that's supposed to fly up to the ship so it's like it's still using you know like physical media to send the information the robot like tries to talk with eo sapien and the eo sapien seems to be kind of understanding what the robot's trying to say because he also blinks back some different icons that i guess the robots can understand what he's trying to do. So while all while he's doing this, he's like uh, halfway halfway wounded. So he gets to like a point where he's done like talking to him, where he's still talking with him, and he sends up one of those little discs to like show like send to the comp uh, to the space shuttle, and the Evil Sapien just kind of like tacks it. Uh, and, and knocks it to the ground and thinks the robot is attacking him. So he freaking kills the robot and that's kind of the end of it. And the rest of it is just kind of like, well, we will never know what will be on, be out there in the, because these creatures could exist or they could not. And it's more just kind of a fantasy sci-fi movie. But it, it, does he really try to make it like, oh, this could actually be what they look like out there? Because we get people like, Me uh, I'm going to mispronounce his name Michio Kaku and then we got Stephen Hawking <laughs> talking about this as well but then we got people like a paleontologist with Jack Horner NASA's chief scientist at the time James B. Garvin but again we got George Lucas kind of like yeah this is kind of what this would look like out there but it's still a fun ride from beginning to end the animation is aged not the best this disc did come out in 2005 so realistic CGI was still still somewhat in its infancy especially when it's like fully CGI like this wasn't using like miniatures and animatronics for some scenes and CGI for for other scenes like stuff like Jurassic Park and stuff no 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 this was like fully CGI but it was like realistic CGI so like some scenes you're like okay this kind of looks cool other scenes you're like oof this looks rough but I, I, I look at it more of like a like what if a planet earth was done in the Star Wars universe kind of thing not really a what if would be out there in the universe but just like and it's narrated by John C. Mc, McGinley of all people it's just really interesting that's who they have to do in the, the narration but anyways it's definitely entertaining so if you're really into that high sci-fi slash i guess high fantasy or you just want to see science uh sci-fi creatures just kind of running around each other without any real like story is as in like human-esque type of creatures talking and stuff and you want to just kind of uh, something you can like nature documentary kind of wise i'd highly check this out um they did release it back in 2009 on dvd through uh image entertainment and i'm sure you can find it somewhere on youtube doesn't look like it's on any streaming sites as of the recording of this video but definitely give it a check out and i know there's some other kind of things that were released around the same time like the future is wild and then netflix eventually made their own type of series called alien worlds that's kind of a pseudo sequel to the series so let me know down in the comments if you've ever heard of this docu-series nature sci-fi movie and what your thoughts are on it and if you'd like me to review more of this kind of stuff in the future and of course like and subscribe for future videos as well and check out some of my other classic movie reviews until next time thank you and have a good day Bye bye